My name is Mark. This is Zen Talk. The topic is Zen Spiritual Seekers. So there are four different types of Zen Seekers that I have classified. And we will be going through what I call the Seeker Classification. And these would be the types of people that you may meet uh, in the Zen centers or really in any spiritual religious organization. So we have the, uh, the spiritual LARPer and the lost, the spiritual gamer, the spiritual scholar, and finally the spiritual practitioner. And now these are broad classifications that I will be talking about. Um, there may be many sub-classifications and hybrid classifications where some of these can be, uh, a person can be one or more of these classifications. So we will talk about that. All right. And the first uh, kind of spiritual person that you might meet is what I call the spiritual LARPer. And LARPing is live action role playing and the lost. So these are people who believe in nothing, and if you ask them what they believe, they will defer to what others think and believe, and not what they believe. Many people try on a role, live action role playing, of a belief, mostly to see what reaction they get from others, and what sort of interactions they have. These type of people are often religion hopping, and bounce from one guru to another. They stay with a church, a religion, or a guru until they have to open up and actually talk about what they believe themselves. And when that happens, they are off to the next church, religion, or guru. Now this is probably the most common person you will see. Um, and when I mean they believe in nothing, they really believe in nothing. They have no conviction. Uh, they have really no spiritual practice, and if you ask them what they believe, they will bring up what others think, or they will start quoting a, a sutra, or they would say, oh, let's talk about Nietzsche, or let's talk about psychology. And that is how that person works out. And a lot of times when I say live-action role-playing, is that they may pretend to have a belief. And we'll often we'll see this in the robes and the haircuts and the sort of religious ornaments they will adorn themselves with. And when that happens, um, you can see this, that they, they kind of pretend they will take on the mannerisms and the characteristics of what they think is the spiritual attitude and the spiritual life. And then they kind of see what happens from there, how others treat them, what happens, um, what sort of reactions they get. And they're kind of looking at trying to find a role. Now, the lost, these are just people, like I said, they, they have no belief. And they may flip from being the lost to role-playing them back to the lost. And these kind of people come and go all the time through the, the churches. Um, they may even tell you that they were with certain church, certain group, certain guru, and they will have a long list of the gurus they sat with, the churches they went to, the events they attended. And when somebody has a long list of all these things they've done, that is a sure indication of a spiritual LARPer. All right, the spiritual gamer. The spiritual gamer is a person who is always attracted to hierarchies, that being any system with ranks, achievements, status positions, or a ladder to climb. And you will also kind of see the same person in the corporate, the corporate gamer as well. These people view spiritual achievements as the rank and status they achieve within the organization. So the higher they climb within the organization, the more spiritually advanced they view themselves. Like the lost and the LARPers, the spiritual gamer believes in nothing 
and he uses the hierarchy to shield themselves from actually having to talk about their practice and what they actually believe. Cults love the gamer. They specifically designed the cult to attract such a person with a lighter system that can be used to manipulate the spiritual gamer. So, as I said, the, the spiritual gamer is also well recognized within the corporations and companies as the ladder climber. You know, they see a hierarchy and they will climb it at any expense, no matter who they step on, who they hurt. A lot of times that the gamer so, so, solely looks at the hierarchy and views the higher they climb as higher enlightenment. And within Zen, you will see this all the time with the, you know, it'll go from the layman to the ordained to practice leader to um, session leader to uh, the various ranks within the organization all the way up to the teacher itself. And as the higher they climb, the more enlightened they think they are. Uh, a lot of times, people who achieve what they call Dharma transmission, which is really nothing more than just a receiving a like a diploma from a school, they believe that they are enlightened. That that is the hot, one of the highest stages of um, the ladder they can climb. That Dharma transmission. So they think they're enlightened. Cults love the gamer because they really design the cult to attract the gamer. And they will lay out a whole path and levels of achievements and ranks that are visible to see. And then, of course, the teacher, the cult leader, will always invent even higher and secret levels uh, within the group for the gamer to achieve. And this is endless. And they will always have another higher level. Uh, so this is how the, the cult manipulates the gamer. All right, the spiritual scholar. This is a person who believes that knowledge is spiritual attainment. This person will read all of the books, the sutras, and the academic writings about a religion or path. And a reason that those who do not read the same books are simply not spiritual and cannot achieve any spiritual awakening. They believe that they are enlightened because of the knowledge they know. Or that there is a level of knowledge that they have yet to achieve to reach enlightenment. As like the lost LARPers and gamer, the scholar uses their knowledge to shield them from actually having to talk about their spiritual practice and what they actually believe. The spiritual scholar also often becomes the spiritual bully and where they become a Bible thumper, an aggressively zealous advocate of their knowledge. You can always detect the spiritual scholar because they will always ask you about uh, Nietzsche or they will always ask you about Freud or Jung and so they will throw up very academic uh, kinds of positions and esoteric writings uh, and want to talk about that um, and that's mostly showing off their spiritual knowledge they they want everybody to know that they have read the books, the sutras, and the academic writings, that they have studied all of the materials that uh, make them look very intellectual, very smart, and very knowledgeable, and they become very prideful. This is creating a self out of knowledge. And they view this as spiritual attainment. They think they're enlightened, that they have read all these books, the sutras, the academic writings, um, they will literally say things that if you don't read the books of the old Zen masters, then you were simply not Zen, which is a ridiculous statement, but that is what they say. And that those who did not read the books that they read cannot be spiritually awakened. That is how they look at it. And they will become a bully. 
Um, they will use their knowledge to bully others, uh, especially those who um, kind of point out the fact that all of their all of their supposed spiritual attainment is just the knowledge that they think they have, and then they become the bullies with that, uh, and they try to shout down, push down uh, people uh, with their knowledge to show themselves as superior. And when I mean Bible thumper, uh, we know what we're talking about here. These are people that will use quotes and Bible tracts to kind of push down other people while raising themselves up. All right. Finally, we have the spiritual practitioner. The spiritual practitioner is a person who only focuses on their practice and what they believe. They can care less about the practice of others, knowledge that does not directly help them with their practice, and even less about hierarchies. This type of person asks you directly what you believe and cares not for answers that deflect or misdirect the question. Often these types of persons can seem aloof, arrogant, or even smug at times. Rarely do these people join a church and will only choose to associate with other like-minded as they are. The spiritual practitioner rarely joins the church, and if they do join the church, they won't stay long. Um, most of the time, these are your hermits. Um, these are your solo practitioners. These are your recluse, or your very reclusive people. Okay. Internet spirituality. The internet attracts the spiritual scholar. They feast on forums such as Reddit, Facebook, YouTube, and anywhere they can display their knowledge. They love to engage other spiritual scholars in hopes to best them or to trick them into some admittance of ignorance. They love the debates, the intellectual fights, bowling of those who they deem lesser through Bible thumping. And that is that aggressive, zealot display of their knowledge. Lost and loppers typically don't do much with the internet forums other than to find a role to play. A handy quote to use next time someone talks spiritual stuff to them. The spiritual practitioners only use the internet to find other practitioners and talk about their practice. And the spiritual gamer? Generally, the gamers don't have any interest in the internet um, because it won't advance them to the next level. Dharma centers. This would be your Zen centers or temples. The spiritual gamer flocks to the Dharma center. They seek any avenue to gain rank and position over the others. The gamer sees the position of Roshi the teacher as the prize and will do anything to get there. Spiritual scholars typically don't last long at the Dharma centers. And the LARPers and the law simply view what the gamers are doing as entertainment. Spiritual practitioners typically don't go to Dharma centers because nobody will talk about practice. Spiritual practitioners see it as, well, since nobody will discuss what they are doing, what they are practicing, and then there's simply no point to go to a Dharma center. So as I discussed, um, the gamer is, is looking for position, and the centers offer position. The scholars are, there, are only there to show off their, their intellectual knowledge. Now, sometimes the gamer and the scholar can kind of become one of the same, or they can flip between both. And you may have sort of this hybrid uh, gamer-scholar that's within the Dharma Center, and they kind of become Dharma bullies, or Zen bullies, in where they will simply interject themselves into a discussion, uh, say things with, from the knowledge that they have, and then walk off. Uh, they think that they're being zenny and cool, or they think that they're being 
like like out of the old uh, Zen master uh, stories where they're just going to walk up to students and say something and then walk off and they'll think that that's enlightenment. This is kind of how a lot of things go in the Zen centers and uh, unfortunately um, you can end up with some rather bizarre kinds of interactions with people there. The only people that really seem to get a chuckle out of this or get a kick out of this are the are the LARPers and the loss because they view that they view everything that goes on in the Zen Center as entertainment. And this they also view all the little games of the spiritual scholars, the put downs, the uh, attacks and the display of knowledge over others, the, especially the the bully bullying that goes on in the internet, as as entertainment again. So, these people, the LARPers and the Lost, are simply at the Dharma centers to be entertained. Uh, the scholars are there. Like I said, they don't last long because. Eventually, somebody's going to be asking about the, what is it that they really believe, when, what is it that they really practice, and they don't have an answer for that because they believe that their knowledge is practice. They believe that their knowledge is enlightenment. And they eventually leave the Dharma centers or, the, or they will re, re, go somewhere where they really can't be asked those questions, such as the Internet. That tends to be where they end up at. And the gamer always has a pat answer to what is my practice and what is my uh you know the gamer is always will always have a crafty answer to the questions of what is my practice and what they believe which is more deflection to what other people believe and more deflection to well practice is zen or practice is uh bowing at the buddha statues practice is um, setting my shoes straight. That that's how they will look at these things. That's more as they will look at uh, practice as the ecclesiastical uh, methods of the church, you know, rather than what they what they do internally themselves. The point of this talk is to help you reflect on your own spiritual path, as well as understanding how others may see the spiritual path. The classifications are not meant to label people, but rather for you to understand why a person may be behaving the way they are. I have been a Buddhist for 35 years, and about um, 10 of those years uh, in the Zen organizations. Um, the classifications that I present to you are pretty much um, what I've found to be so, and almost everybody can be put in one of those classifications. Um, sometimes there will be a hybrid, uh, especially between the spiritual scholar and the spiritual gamer, or you, they can be one and the same. This is not to dissuade you from going to the, the Zen centers or to go to the, or to learn, just be aware that um, these organizations are set up the way they are often to attract the gamer and the uh, the lost and the um, the larper these uh, that's how they make their money that's how they fund things and they know this it's this is not what I'm saying is not shocking and uh first time ever um, cult leaders 100 percent understand who the gamer is and they set up the church specifically to attract that person because they know that the people will pay especially if you lay out all of these things that they're going to get they're going to pay for it um they're not really too interested in the scholar because often the scholars uh don't pay and they don't um they don't stay the the larpers will show up and they will they will pay but they're not paying for the ranks and they're not paying to advance anything they're paying for the entertainment value and that would be the whole spiritual entertainment that um the larpers and the lost uh love and they they love the drama 
they love what's going on between the gamers and the teachers and the and within the hierarchy they find the whole thing to be extremely entertaining and that's why they're there and as for the true practitioners a lot of times they may show up uh, listen to a talk or to talk to somebody and they're only interested in their practice they can care less about what books you read about what rank you have um, yeah, or 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 what somebody else thinks of of practice they don't care and a lot of the times the spirit the true spiritual practitioners like i said they're hermits they're recluses uh, they're um they don't really go to the church and sometimes you'll if you go to the more established churches you will find one or two priests who Maybe they're there as groundkeepers, or maybe they are there as um, uh, other functions, but they don't really engage with anybody. And those are your true practitioners. Um, they're there, just not in, not in sight most of the time. All right, well, I hope my, uh, my talk has helped you, and uh, if you liked the video, please remember to like and subscribe, and thank you very much.